Okay, say some things. Hello. Adventure. Love. Connection. Risk. Passion. Evolution. Play. Life. The Archetypal Tarot Podcast. Provocative mythology for the 21st century. Amidst this pandemic, we are feeling all the feels. It's exhausting. It's confounding. It's scary. And undoubtedly, it's changed life as we know it forever. I'm Julianne Javeau, an archetypal consultant, and together with my co-host, Story Through Stone founder and teacher, Sundara Quackenbush, we dive into the archetypal catalysts found in three tarot cards, death, rebirth, judgment, and the world. How these relate to the coronavirus pandemic provides insight into our individual and collective opportunities for what could be a pretty big leap forward in evolution. We discuss questions that can help us process what's going on and possibly discover our particular part in this evolutionary process. We finish with an idea for an exercise to open ourselves and attune to the inspiration of beauty that can still be found even in these dark times. Note, this recording contains coarse language as usual, as well as some humor. If the idea of death is overwhelming for you, consider saving this episode for later. We don't present anything graphic, but we do reference metaphorical death and rebirth as a part of the evolution and growth process. If that's too much for you right now, we get it. All of our feelings and experiences are heightened as we navigate this crisis. And the last thing we want is to make it worse. We send you aloha and compassion. And if you're still with us, we hope you find inspiration in this podcast. And please reach out to us on social media or by email. Ring, 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 calling Sundara. Hello, is this death? <laughs> we, we, I don't speak enough <laughs> friends to do that. Um, so, I'm not death. <laughs> but aren't we all death? I mean, we've all got a little bit of death in us. So, um, how are things in San Francisco? Let's do a little quick check-in. Um, I'm in Pacifica, so I still right. Bay Area. disconnected a little bit. And I just saw a sign on my walk. Um, I feel very lucky. I live close to a, a beach that is kind of overlooked, um, <laughs> which is good. Um, so, and yesterday on my walk, uh, there was a sign that said, if you're uh, further than five miles away from where you live, you're uh, basically breaking the shelter in place law. So, oh. so it made me realize, wow, technically I can't even go into my usual workplace that is in San Francisco to pick anything up or anything at this point. Um, I mean, I could, but um, it's not not life uh, threatening, so I won't. <laughs> so, There's a lot of lockdown. So that's where we're at. Um, just I haven't been to a store in the month. I've just work and walk. It's not too bad. You're you guys are all healthy. All healthy. I feel very very lucky. Likewise, here um, there hasn't uh, been an appreciable change in the routine of my life we'll put it that way um although fewer trips to the store and things like that um but yeah I, it's a weird sort of roller coaster what the last time we talked was much earlier on in this whole covid19 pandemic so it's it's an interesting place to kind of like look back on where we were and the, the news of it and when you and I talked about, let's keep doing the podcast, which by the way, we will keep doing podcasts as a duo again for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's we're like celebrations. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's a fertile time for sure to, um, connect about these things. And hopefully in the, you know, giant pool of podcasts that are out there that we can, um, continue to provide our, um, sometimes unusual and provocative perspective. So hopefully it'll be embraced in this um, rebirth of us as a duo um, and certainly concentrating on what's happening in the world and what you and I were talking about the other day. Um, never, my, my, one of my observations was 
never in our lifetimes have we as a planet, a planet have ever had to all face death in some form or another, or the idea of death or death and sickness Mm -hmm. surrounding us all at the same time. Wow. Like that is big, you know, in my, uh, conversations with other people too, uh, America, at least in my opinion, we're not so great with death. We don't uh, like as a ritual and as physical death of the body. Um, it's pretty rich in denial about what it is, but, um, it just seems like there's got to be an opportunity within what is happening with COVID. And I know we talked about silver lines and things like that. Now, this doesn't, doesn't feel so much as a silver lining as a pretty direct opportunity because we all have to face this idea as thousands of people are dying of a thing that's invisible. So that's pretty global. That's a wow. Yeah. That's a wow thing in and of itself. Yeah, we're genuinely in it all together. And and not to say that there isn't discrepancies of luck and privilege and all of those things still oh, happening, yeah. but but we are truly uh for the first time in our lifetimes all in it together in uh in the world. Uh it's um waking up to that has been uh incredible. Yes, and having kind of compassion for the parts of ourselves that are still wanting to go back into absolute denial and the people who are not acting in a way that is helpful to what is going on. Those who continue to go expose other people and, you know, the (laughs) people who just think let's get back to business as usual because the money is more important. You know, that's something that's really struck me between the last time we talked and now of, you know, the worship of the economy. I mean, I'm, not saying it's not important, but it's pretty striking that the value and dignity of humanity is kind of at a low when people are really literally saying it's fine if if old people die or sick people uh, die because of this, because really the economy is more important. Like that's pretty fucking shocking. Mm-hmm. Um and so in our podcast today, we're discussing uh, the death card. We'll also cover judgment and the world. But starting with death here, um, that is one of the forms of death that has been very difficult for many to swallow um, uh, for for obvious reasons, but very, very difficult. The death of the economy um, sort of being swallowed up into a black hole like many things in our lives. Um, and And there was a story of, St. Rosalia that came out in the New York Times actually a few weeks ago uh, that I thought was a fabulous story. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, hey, we're on a tarot podcast here, so it's, <laughs> we're going to be talking about <laughs> metaphors anyway. So um, exactly. I thought this would be a great story to, to launch our discussion of death. And so from the New York Times, it was really a, a reflection on, on art and a painting of St. Rosalia. But the, the story, when I researched her a little bit, uh, goes something like this. She was uh, an Italian woman, her name was Rosalia, and she had, had this vision in her youth of basically removing herself from the world and self-isolating, which is a big theme that we covered, of course, in The Hangman, and it's been a big part of our experience right now. But she had this vision of self-isolating in a cave and dedicating her, her life to to her spiritual and religious visions and, and practices. Now, she ends up dying in this cave, and uh, many years later, it's, it's in the, I believe it's the 1600s, she um, visits someone in their dreams, and it's during the, uh, one of the world's worst plagues. Maybe it's the 600s. I gotta. <laughs> I'm not good with that. Forgive me. <laughs> metaphors here. Metaphors. <laughs> a long freaking time ago. I, I, I'm a storyteller, so everything begins with. <laughs> All right, 1624. Anyway, 1624 okay. was was when the plague, the the era of that plague. I'm helping you out there. 
Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Fact checker. I, if I was a politician, I'd, I'd have you at my side. Ooh. <laughs> Let's talk um, about that later. <laughs> that's right. That, that's pertinent as well. So anyway, back to the story. The vision comes to a person in this town during the depths of a horrific plague that has uh, come to the city of Palermo in Italy. And the vision says, as comes from St. Rosalia herself, and she says, come find my bones. Here is where they are buried. And then you must uh, make a procession of these bones and circumnavigate, circle the city in a procession three times with, the, with my bones. So this individual goes to the cave where he was instructed in the dream and actually finds the bones and brings them back down to the city and sure enough creates this, this stir in this procession from the vision to, to go around the, the city three times. Of course leading to, and this is the part that would be so interesting to know if it was true or not, but the plague uh, literally disappears from the city after this procession. Now Oof. whether or not it is literally true, there is a a uh, metaphorical interest in this for me of r really getting to the depths of something, to, to, uh, bringing up the bones. Um, mm. And of course, when we look at any, uh, almost any version of, of the death car, we're seeing a skeleton, uh, the deepest part of our structure uh, enlivened, animated, and wreaking havoc in some way or another on the land. And... Um, and this metaphor is interesting in terms of looking at how is death, how are we looking at death and how is it important for us to look at death in all of its different manifestations during this period of time. And, and what, it, and of course, three being always significant in, in myth and folktale, but maybe what are those top three ways that death is manifesting for you? We're all looking at the reality of literal death in the masses right now um but we're also looking at you know the possibility what what would it be like if i have this illness and what would that mean for my life at this point in time we've all looked at the possibility of a, lo a loved one or a significant other mm -hmm. possibly facing this death and what that would mean for for life we look at the and then back to that death of the economy death of the world as we know it, death of business as usual. And it's just interesting to see. I've, I've never found this card so vital and even comforting in a time like this because it's it's kind of like, it's interesting, right? The death card because it's, it's, a, it's the reason a lot of people don't even want to approach the tarot. <laughs> they know that they know that death card is in there somewhere and they don't want to get it. Um, and we're all like, yeah, it's important. And we, it's about rebirth and we got to talk about it. But now more than ever is the time to look at this card in, in, in its own, in its depth. Uh, and it, it's just so fascinating. <laughs> and I, I'm going to provide a pun laden idea right now. Go for it. So, okay. So I'm going to, I have something punny. I have a pun laden idea um, based on what you were seeing that people avoid, tar you know, tarot just because of the death card. Or, you know, it's a thing. People are like, oh, I don't want that. So um, if you're one of those people or even if not, um, take your temperature in how you feel about looking at the death card, the idea of death and death and rebirth. To me, they were always inextricably together death and rebirth always there you don't have a death without a rebirth it's just sort of they're two you know different sides of the same coin so take your temperature in terms of how willing you are to engage with this idea and then if you're okay and you're not freaking out by it um take a look at like you were saying in the top three ways death is manifesting what's going away um and then maybe what what are you able to let go of now and how does that inform how you're going to dream of the future? Which is, you know, we'll roll into that when we talk about judgment in the world. 
but to me, looking at death, rebirth, judgment, and the world in sequence with each other seems really, really powerful at yeah. this time. And so if you have that resistance to the idea of death, um, it's interesting to, if you can embrace it a little bit or whatever your process is to approach it, do that in the context of also realizing everyone at one level or another, even if they're in absolute denial of it, are dealing with this idea. It is an archetype yes. that has shown up in the entire planet. And to me, no matter what, that's an opportunity, period. There's so much mm -hmm. rich opportunity that comes out of that. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy in any way, shape, or form. But right. unique to this moment, wow, there's a lot there. So um, really looking at like, what are you letting go of now? Or what is being taken away from you? And how does that inform how you're thinking about the future or dreaming? You know, if you can skip over temporarily, you know, quell the absolute fear that many people are feeling financially, um, to go, you know, what is the vision that's going to guide you through this? And that's again, kind of moving from fear, right? The, the rate, the spectrum fear into love, moving it more over this actions taken out more towards the middle to the love end of the spectrum, um, do so much more than just simply out of fear. Fear will let you get away from the tiger or run from the tiger. And it's awesome. We need fear. Yeah. We absolutely mm -hmm. do need fear. Yeah, but, um, right. I'm not like a, don't have fear. At least be fearless. I'm like, oh, stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop with your fuck, <laughs> fuck you and your fucking fearlessness. <laughs> Ain't no thing. Sociopaths are fearless. You know, it's how you work with it. So, you know, this is me and my pop psychology. But um, that's something that's been really interesting. Uh, we will link the article that you were talking about with St. Rosalia as well. So there will be a bunch of stuff in the show notes for this show, including journal prompts. Um, actually, what we just, the question that we talked about, what are you letting go of now? And how does that inform the dream of your future? Um, work with that. Like journal it if you're a journaler. Um, do some art about it. Do some dance about it. Whatever you're... Whatever your creativity um, is, you know, Google some stuff, whatever it is that you're drawn to do, that's definitely something that could be super rich. And then that, you know, that can be so, again, it's that something is dying, so rebirth can happen. You know, the, the tree, the leaves fall from the tree, they create the mulch for the new life to kind of come up. So, um it doesn't behoove us to skip any of that. In fact, it's super painful. And Sundara, you um, attended a virtual lecture by Michael Mead, and he was talking That's right. about that. Yeah, I would um, love to just mention the this, you know, he's on <laughs> Zoom doing his live uh, presentations, which are uh, very, very rich and a, a I think this is a great time to get this intimate, even though you're on the other side of the glass, um, the fact that it's live and that people are in their own homes, there is there is this interesting intimate quality about it, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, so anyway, his series is called A Time of Transformation on Earth. It, it got started um, on Friday, April 17th, but he's got a couple more um, the next two Fridays. Um, so he talks about this period of time with some of our usual routines and distractions deeply disturbed or removed or dying or dead, um, that it brings us back in touch with our, our deep, some of our deepest wounds that may have gotten started or initiated uh, earlier on in our lives. And we've been able to ignore, ignore them in various ways. Um, but this unique period of time with the removal of, our usual comforts uh, brings us and distractions space and distractions and distractions. Yeah. Bring us back into in touch literally with, with these wounds. And, um, and he tells the story of the, the old woman. It's a, it's, it's a story that appears in a lot of native American tales, but the old woman who's weaving the world and, 
she her dog catches one of the threads and totally just you know it it totally unravels and and falls into a chaotic mess on the floor that's where we're at right now <laughs> it's a it's a death of an old form and so he's asking us what are our old forms that we had uh that that need to be shed during this period of time because we have this we've sort of fallen into this black hole and black hole is a big imagery that's shown up in the news it's shown it's shown up synchronistically for me personally but yeah. with the world sort of falling into this black hole um when we go back it's going to be a a rebirth it's going to be uh, something that we'll need to have ritual around it, a ritual of the return uh, to hold that space and to, to welcome people back in a meaningful way. But it also means like, wow, the old world really is the old world. There's no going back to normal. Uh, there's going to be people who are going to try, right? But there is no totally going back to normal from the space. Um, and And how can we consciously release old forms during this period of time uh, for when we return and what new things are wanting to be reshaped from that, that mass of chaotic threads that have fallen on the floor and how do we want to re reweave this? Um, so that was kind of the essence of what he was talking about. Um, he also talked about the apocalypse, not mm -hmm. being, not being an ending, but being a beginning. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we move into the judgment card, but I just want to make sure wh what more did you want to talk about death? <laughs> I could, I could go on all day. What? I could go on all day about <laughs> death. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what you said, and that's the thing that, you know, in part, other than having, you know, a bit more time on my hands than I did before, just, you know, it is providing an avenue for the two of us to get together more regularly and kind of, yeah. you know, get the gang back together and do this. Um, but part of one of the reasons that I was like, you know, it was an absolute yes for me was to have converse, continue to have conversations and share around this opportunity and to parse out mm -hmm. and to really reflect on, you know, there's definitely um, just based on watching, you know, the news and paying attention to things and podcasts and what are people are talking about. Um, and then looking at just kind of how things are happening in the political scene, this, there is so much to me, a big danger that people are like, I just want it to get back to normal, normal, normal. I want it to be just the way it was before. And mm. to me, that is so tragic. I get it. I completely get it because yeah. maybe what you had before you really, really liked um, and it, things where you felt comfortable, right? Um, I don't think, you know, security is, is so much more psychological than it is anything else, right? So this idea of it's almost Buddhist idea of like, okay, here's your idea of security. Boom, that is gone. But do you really want the world to go back to the way it was? Isn't mm -hmm. there like, let's take advantage of this opportunity that we have to really reflect on how we got to where we are, how we're relating to each other, how our economy, and I'm just going to say it in, especially in the United States and elsewhere, you know, it's so uneven. It's so, you know, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor to just go, we, we can't go back to being asleep about that and the injustice for, um, people of color and the, you know, the injustices and immigrants and everything like that. And the whole idea that like human dignity is that question, but it's coming up, you know what I mean? Showing its ugly face in really like scary ways, but it's important for us to acknowledge that and recognize in our hearts, wow, what part of me thinks someone is less important, you know, that their life is worth less. Those are the rich, rich, fertile grounds. Um, and that moves us, I think, into judgment, right? The judgment card and what that can mean here of, of moving from the death and rebirth cycle into judgment and then moving out of that into a vision, a new vision of the world and what that looks like. So judgment are you ready for some judgment yes. judgy judgment um, i've never been more ready for judgment in my whole life. And, and of course that you know to look at that image now of you know pick any deck but 
but you know we've got the the sort of classic image of judgment card they, there are people uh rising from their graves um in in the with the angel sounding its horn you know <laughs> and um it just feels like an awakening and and you know the 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 image of the coffin and rising up out of that coffin we we just passed the by graves right yeah we just passed by uh Easter here recently, and there's there's this imagery of rising from the grave, uh, and you know once mm -hmm. we've looked at death in its different manifestations, how it has impacted us, we've done that metaphorical circumnavigation of our own town, which is each of ourselves, uh, looking at the bones here. Then we can rise up and and hear clear this call and um, another. Uh, passage from Michael Mead in his his live presentation last night, which was that in this period of time we are connecting with those deepest wounds, but next to our wounds are the threads of our purpose, and they they actually exist very closely with one another and impact each other. So uh, after we've looked at these very difficult realities, um, touching back to the core of why we're here, what our purpose is, what calls us. Uh, in this new world that we're going to step back into, uh, that it's not just going back to a mindless routine or the way things used to be. It's it, we have a chance here to arise in a new way, yeah. and that it's a process. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a process. Even though the pandemic wasn't, you know, the, the getting locked in and everything we're doing around that, it is. You know, it's been a couple of months, depending on where you live. Um, that is. That's a, that was a fast process compared to what it's going to look like to sort of deal with the pandemic, to deal with the coronavirus, um, and the fact that it is almost guaranteed it's going to continue to flare up here and there, right? Yeah. Depending on how we act and, and react, um, <laughs> that it this is going to be a process. So we have like, what is dying and what can be rebirthed out of it and understanding that that the process of moving through it is super important. That's where, you know, the idea of letting stuff go and developing a vision for where you want to move toward will really help make this process effective and bearable, right? Because I think mm. most of our brains want to just get to wherever we can go back to normal. Like I desperately miss doing weddings. I desperately mm. miss Maui, you know, like that work. I just, I absolutely adore I understand it's going to be a long process and I don't know. I really don't know when, when that's going to happen for me again um, or how, but the richness of the judgment card is self-realization, understanding, awakening, and getting an idea of what your where are your motivations? You know, how are things becoming clear for you through this process um, and kind of reckoning with that um and the reverse of that is the reverse of judgment has a lot to do with hiding it's shadow mm -hmm. it is deep deep shadow like what what things are being called out of us what parts of us have maybe we forgot forgotten um and judgment itself i think it's i don't know i i often think of our self-judgment um how we judge ourselves poorly and you know if if that actually served a purpose that worked in our lives we'd all be amazing human beings, right? If judgment actually worked, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if self-hatred worked to motivate me to do whatever it is I want, like, man, it would be working. My life would be amazing, you know. I'd be 30 pounds lighter, you know, all those things that, you know, I beat myself up for. Um, so, the and then the judgment card too, and, and this idea that, there's quite a few people and they're generally super conservative who, who are saying like, you know, old people dying is acceptable um, if we can save the economy. That's a judgment, right? And this idea of mm. who deserves, who deserves to be bailed out, you know, judging pe because you're poor, you're being judged as a bad person and you're less valuable. That idea of judgment on this large scale, like, let's look at that. Like, let's see where we are maybe individually harboring, you know, by the virtue of the fact that we all, we all have to draw boundaries somewhere. You know, we can't cry our eyes out because 
you know, every time we hear somebody dying or someone's hurt or someone's poor, you know, we do have some, have to have some sort of porous boundary where we hold ourselves together and then maintain compassion for other people. But, you know, Mm. does the world that we want to live on, on the other side of this, which, you know, let's just say it's even a five years hence, you know, how, how is, how does that look in terms of the dignity of everybody who's around in the planet? Like, you know, how, how does where, how we're living respect the dignity of life period. That's a big one, but it's a big crisis. So um, it is the, the journal prompt for judgment um, mm-hmm. or journal or whatever, however you want to work at the ideas, what part of yourself in this crisis needs to be unjudged by accepting mm-hmm. it in order to feel more whole. Um, I rewrote that a bunch of times to try to make it super specific because I think we're always whole, but we don't always feel that we're whole. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what part of yourself, what part of myself in this crisis needs to be unjudged? I love that. yeah, Yeah. Unjudge it. And you do that by accepting it and then realize that you will now feel more whole. You will get back at least for a moment, to the recognition of your innate wholeness. And with the mentioning of the wholeness, we can um, move into the the world card here. But just before we we cross that threshold, um, I'd also like to offer our listeners, um, you can journal about these questions. You can also treat these questions like a a spread. So you can draw a card from your favorite uh, tarot or oracle or card deck and if you, to, to help with the prompt. And um, I don't know about you, but uh, whenever I draw a card, whether I like it or not, it's almost always the right card. Mm. Hey, it's the right card. 2020, but, 2020, the strength card. I mean, <laughs> so you can journal with, you know, how you are thinking right now about these things. You can also draw a card to maybe show you what, what is still under co- your conscious awareness of answers to these questions. So um, it's gonna go I like big. that. These yeah. three cards are their own spread. I love that. Yeah, anyway, the prompts from each one are their own spread. I might actually, well, I might actually write that up a little more specifically for the for the show notes because um, I like that. I really, really like that. Great. Right. Um, yeah, it's such a great, it's such a great time to be doing readings for yourself. <laughs> it is, and you know what? Uh, I'm I'm definitely seeing out on the socials. Um, a lot of really cool people like um, Rootlock Tarot. He is um, doing spreads for very specific things. Like just yesterday or today, I saw um, a three card spread for depression, um, which is definitely something most of us are kind of coming in and out of because, you know, that lack of human connectivity or, you know, being the house either by yourself or just with the same people all the time. Yeah. <laughs> can be, you know, there's, there's stuff that we're being held back from right now can be really depressing. So hopefully looking at these, you know, especially what we just talked about, what part of yourself needs to be unjudged. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. So moving into the world, uh, what a beautiful card, what a beautiful card. And what a, um, we had, we had opened this podcast speaking about how we are all in this together as a world right now. And, and this beautiful card comes into view of the figure dancing. And um, yeah, the, for me, what comes up, and we're, we're here at Earth Day this month, but uh, I've been collecting articles around changes that have been noticed in the environment and with animal life <laughs> due to uh, the changes in the human patterns. Um, in India, for the first time in 30 years, a city can see the Himalayas. And me, myself being 35 years old, I'd be like, wow, what, what if the last time I had seen that image was when I was five years old and I, I were seeing that now? What a cool trip to take in my imagination, especially when <laughs> travel outside of five miles isn't allowed. Um, the the habits of animals shifting and, and coming uh, sheep are there I think they were like some sort of horned animal in the I think it was whales of course it would be whales <laughs> so got sheep. 
<laughs> some wild sheep coming into the towns and just trotting down the main streets. There's uh, lions in uh, that are that normally would have been hiding from safaris, lying in the <coughs> warmth of the sun, right in the middle of the road. Um, <laughs> Bears, yeah, all the, the yeah. forget which national park it was. Um, Yellowstone but yeah bears are like they've never seen more bears tons yeah. of bears I just saw six wow. probably yearling deer on my walk yesterday mm. I mean we do see them they are they're not incredibly rare more during the summer mm. but um you know and they one just the, it's always the last one in the pack that always stops and looks at me and that you just you, they regard you and I really kind yeah. of felt like you know this was probably five or six about the same age um still young they don't have horns yet and uh mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. stop and his ears went up and it just regarded me and looked at me and I didn't move I said aloha and it just walked away slow it looked at me and then walked away slowly it was like oh you're not a threat or you know what what have you um yeah that here on uh here in Pacifica I saw um a northern fur seal come to the beach and oh. you know less people than usual perhaps roaming the beach and she just decided to come there and rest and uh that's very special coyotes uh, i hear are i i would see them anyway but th they are out and about more in san francisco i hear those that uh listen to the what is the name of the people who listen to the earthquakes seismologists uh, seismologists there you go seismologists uh, are able to hear and sense movements in the actual earth that they wouldn't have been able to even detect before because of the usual movements of human beings. It feels like the voice of it, of the earth itself uh, that you're able to listen to and connect with a just a little bit more than, than we did before. So um, this is probably an example of a positive sort of death, a death of less smog, a death of our usual noise and, and bustling um, and what, what can be witnessed and gained through that uh, as we look at the world card. Yeah. I mean, we, we probably won't have another opportunity like this in our lifetime mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of certain things. I don't personally ascribe to, there's a lot of, you know, talk about like, you know, mother earth sent us this, you know, to calm us down and to get us to think about, you know, that's, I don't know. I don't necessarily agree with the idea of the angry, angry Gaia. I mean, you can have that. I don't necessarily think it's right or wrong. I just personally, it just doesn't sit with me super well. Um, whatever. Do you, you do you boo in terms of that. I just heard so much of it in social media and people are like, mother earth is angry. It's like, okay, maybe um, I personally don't get a lot out of that. I do get the fact mm -hmm. that like, yeah, absolutely. We, we could do a lot better for ourselves and the planet if we were a lot more local about our lives and, mm. and actually respected the dignity of the life that's around us and connected to it more. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm all, I'm all down with that. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the idea of what do we want the world to look like? You know, what is the vision of the future mm. that we're moving toward? The world card is completion new levels of consciousness, um, wholeness, that completion of a cycle, but also, you know, geez, what does that look like? I've said this before on the podcast. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around what does it look like for a world to be better, you know, for our relationship to our planet and to each other, you know, to be lit based less mm. on judgment and more on compassion, which is my belief connectivity to each other you know what does it take to be happy it's i think far more simple than um our you know we've got a consumer driven life you know the culture is really all you know make more money buy this buy that and even if a certain class can do that their ability to do that is in direct relationship to other people's not ability to actually get there but there's a lot more people talking about what does make us happy, having close relationships, whether they're family or their friends, our connectivity to each other, our ability to understand each other and connect, you know, through all the vicissitudes of life, being connected to each other is a huge part of 
how we can be happy. It's a component of happiness, far more so than money, right? Correct. So you, you know, you can have all the money in the world, but you can still be incredibly depressed and lonely. Absolutely. And and you know, <laughs> just a quick flashback to the death card. It's a great leveler. It's not um, deciding between people because of how much they have. It's the king who's lying on the on the surface of the earth. <laughs> And I, this, as you were speaking, this great vision, and I it was coming to me, and um, I work with children, so being able to pose the question to the young of what what vision do you have for the world as we step back into it? Uh, what is your vision of the new world? Because uh, I feel like uh, young people have probably felt like coming up against this great machine. Uh, that it just, it's too hard for it to, it's hard to imagine a new world outside of it because it just feels, felt so, you know, in charge of everything. Um, in this moment where it feels like it's <laughs> lost its oil or something, mm -hmm. it's not the wheels are not turning and working like they're supposed to, opens up the whole larger vision possible for young people to say, wow, what, we could have a say in how how this uh, pans out, and and but it, it's going to take our imagination and vision to even inquire what that would look like. So that that could be an interesting card um, to round out the spread that we're designing as we talk here about. Yeah, that is you know there's the personal world that you want to envision for yourself. What is the world you want to step into? And also, what is that? What would a, co a new collective world look like and, and your piece of that? Yeah. Um, you, you really, really just underlined what has just so been coming up for me. Um, mm -hmm. Imagination, right? How yes. do we, how do we imagine? And when, you know, a, a friend of mine who is somebody who's very much um, a devout Christian posted something about, you know, uh, one of the politicians who was like, you know, you know, let, let, let people essentially let people die, you know, let them eat cake um, because our economy needs to come back. And, and she posted it with the kind of like, God, this is so sad. And, and I said, you know, in, in the comments, I just posted, I go, yeah, they're, they're worshiping the golden calf from the old Testament, but they also have an incredible lack of imagination. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? There really is this, this is the way the economy and how we operate financially, which is, hey, it's all part of life. Everybody got to eat, you know. Um, that lack of imagination being so stuck in these ideas of, you know, how things have to work in order for them to get what they want. It is they're just bereft of imagination and options. Mm -hmm. And like we talked about before in the last podcast, we have a glut of dystopian media or dystopian films and <laughs> ideas and books like so much so that it was really hard I was I had to rack my brain to think of what do we have that's utopian right that we want to move toward um baking in the fact that as you know narrative plots always need to have you know, we, we'd be bored if it was all happiness and light. It would just be an episode of the Teletubbies. <laughs> and even the Teletubbies has some conflict in it. So we need some conflict. We're just, I guess that's how we are right now. We have to have some kind of conflict. Fine. So I went on a little search besides Star Trek, right? That immediately I'm like, okay, Star Trek was like, but, you know, created after a big war where everyone was just killing each other and mm. they decided to unite and get together. And, you know, there's like a world card moment there. So besides that... Mm -hmm. I had to put my thinking cap on. And so I have a list that I'm going to put in the show notes, but I will read um, a few of them just because I wanted, if, if people are, you know, we're stuck at home, most of us. So if you want to watch something utopian-esque, um, Star Trek, obviously, the whole schmeal, all of those. Um, Black Panther. I was like, duh, my hand hit my <laughs> head. Black Panther, mm -hmm. probably to me, the most modern, rich, beautiful um, a vision of how people are with each other and they are, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's got the conflict. It's got all of that happening, but I was like, damn, that is, yeah, I'm, I gotta watch. I, I really, really enjoyed that mm -hmm. movie so mm -hmm. much. And it was like a breath of fresh air in so many ways. Um, mm -hmm. so I was super into that. Um, 
one that is like both dystopian and utopian and it's one of my favorite films and i always have to mention it and that's cloud atlas um adore that film um avatar to mm. a certain avatar to a certain degree right before the big greedy company comes and destroys all of it <laughs> but the you know the right. the people that live on the on the planet that is yeah that is very utopian in its way um and so i have others that i will list um there's a french film that uh i it, it literally speaks to a lot of the idea of going back to the land and living very simply which is what many mm. of us think of like how can our lives actually get back to something meaningful um called la belle verte i haven't found um a copy of it to watch but um definitely get to the show notes we will be linking and putting lists and things yes. together there and so what's our question or journal subject um i wrote two for the world and one is what does your your beautiful future look like what is your mm -hmm. imagination um bringing you to what does that look like what does it smell like what does it taste like use all your senses um and then are you able to envision a future where our world has changed so much for the better mm -hmm. to me I, I realize this is typically we go in fits and starts there's going to be some incremental stuff but the opportunity now is is less about incremental and more about like big leaps so yeah are you able to hold that i'm going to i'm going to be the first to admit really hard to do um i have mm -hmm. a very pragmatic mind um but i think for me it's a good exercise to test myself to see if i can envision it for myself what what would it look like and you know those films and stuff like that give different references um how can i envision that without a ton of judgment right yeah actually as you're mentioning these um i don't know if you've seen the documentary the biggest little farm oh my uh, god yes yeah I'm that's really that making me think about and, and it's not <clears throat> by any means a you know uh rose colored glasses uh documentary it really shows how hard it is to 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 run a farm or to to live that life but the way that they uh pair cultivation with the wild nature i think is a wonderful um example of kind of this world card image that we're uh looking at so that it's it's actually a quite enjoyable documentary too so that's coming to mind and um as in terms of old films the seventh seal uh ingmar bergman's um i hope i'm saying his name right but um ingmar bergman Bergman film um because actually Max von Sydow died actually about a month or so ago uh he's the plays the knight in the film he's playing a chess game against death uh during the time of the plague and uh there's oh hell movies. yeah I haven't seen yeah, that in so it's, long it's I recommend oh my gosh so see that movie during this period of time it will knock your socks off um and there's a my favorite moment in that film is when they're all uh they're out in nature and they're enjoying some uh milk and some wild strawberries and the night max von Sado in that moment he's just he's he's demonstrating basically what we all talk about now popularly mindfulness right but he's he's absolutely he's beautifully in that moment of being like wow i will always remember this moment where you know it was spring it's springtime just like we're in right now um and the 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 laughter of that child the taste of this milk the taste of the strawberries and um it's it's just a beautiful and profound film uh, that's very timeless and speaks to this time that we're in right now it's it's extraordinary why didn't i think of that one no that's perfect i'm so glad you brought that up um mm -hmm. the biggest little farm just got added to my list here and um kind of with that if you're interested if you're somebody who has a bent to look at you know reconnecting growing your own food because a lot of people are talking about that and duh like be a good time to right? have your own backyard farm um there is an organization called local futures and i do personally i'm i'm really interested in the green new deal i think it's a great direction to go into so if you want to look at the sunrise movement and the green new deal they are actually doing the work to try to envision 
a different way of being. So we're not all lacking imaginations. There are people out there. We're not alone in that. So Sunrise Movement, the Green New Deal, and kind of with that as a, 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 a group called Local Futures. I heard about it on Russell Brand's um, Under the Skin podcast. And, uh, oh, I don't remember her name, but it'll all be in the, in the show notes of, you know, we're not alone in this. We're not alone at looking at what things can look like that aren't simply in the city. You know, what, what jobs and occupations can look like that, you know, aren't driven towards technology and manufacturing, which is kind of the way things have gone. Um, and so, yeah, tons of resources. I'm excited that we have had this chance to kind of get together and talk about it. And if you're ready, Sandira, do you want to wrap it up and talk about the beauty journal? Yeah, I would like for you to talk about the beauty journal. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> well, don't mind if I do. So in- <laughs> you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh you talk gosh. about only oh gosh. <laughs> Likewise, I'm sure. So this idea of the death, rebirth, judgment into the world, and reimagining what the the world looks like. Um, I heard on a different podcast because I do listen to other people's podcasts. Podcast is called Metaphysical Milkshake. And it's with Rain Wilson, the actor, and Reza Aslan, um, who is like a scholar of um, many different things, the Muslim um, tradition. He's more like more agnostic, but they, they just do a fun exploration of all different kinds of ideas, hence metaphysical milkshake. And one of the episodes actually had Rain Wilson's uncle, who teaches um, at a college, and he described this journal exercise that he had his students do and it was a class on beauty so there's this whole we could do a whole episode on beauty we could do a hundred episodes on beauty Mm -hmm. but to me the idea of beauty right is going to spur our emergent imaginations it's going to reawaken parts of us that might have gone dormant or have been undiscovered again the judgment the bringing about the reawakening of things so if we can use beauty as our locus our focus point um what better way than to work with beauty every day in our lives so the specific journal exercise that was recommended is four things once a week so you you can do it as often as you want but if you commit to doing once a week journaling on these four things something that you have experienced observed that is beautiful design so that could be anything designed right and that to me kind of speaks of the human hand was involved and we'll get to the next one and i'll explain why so beautiful design that could be a beautiful website a book cover um you know a shoe a dress any beautiful design architecture everything So observe that, put your spidey senses out into the world looking for beautiful design. Um, What you find beautiful, right? It doesn't need to be, this is all very subjective. And then beauty in nature. Write about something beautiful in nature that you have observed. And if you're not able, you know, you're trapped in your apartment in New York City or whatever, um, this can actually be something beautiful you observed in a film or, you know what I mean? You're just really, I mean, ideally you're out in nature if you can be, but just natural beauty, right? Write about it, describe it. But the most important part is to put your senses out there to, oh, right, beauty in nature. I'm going to be on the lookout for that. Um, and then to me, one of the most interesting parts of this is something morally beautiful, morally beautiful. So that can be described, you know, we're, we're seeing videos of, of how people are really showing up for each other in this time of crisis. So mm-hmm. it's a perfect example of, you know, the, um, the kids doing sidewalk chalk in front of their neighbor's houses to say, you're not alone and rainbows. And the way people are reaching out to each other, non-literally, um, to do this for each other. The, the fact that we've got healthcare workers working their butts off, you know, and, and, you know, what certain communities are doing to thank their healthcare workers. Just anything morally beautiful, like, just be on the lookout for that. We're putting a bolo out on something morally beautiful. Um, and if you come up with a bunch of things, more the better, Right. 
So I love this idea of observing the morally beautiful, the idea that rest, people are paying their, you know, if they have a housekeeper, they're continuing to pay their housekeeper while, you know, everyone's on sh lockdown, shut down and stuff like that. So, so that's the third. And the fourth is a beautiful idea. What mm. is a beautiful idea? You might get inspired by what you found was morally beautiful. Um, and a beautiful idea. You might be inspired by a beautiful idea in one of the films that we, we bring up. Um, so beauty. So I'm going Sounds with that. like you've got another little spread you could do with that whole thing. <laughs> right? No, I think, <clears throat> I really think the, the beauty journal as it is put out, unaltered, really taking the time to write it down um, and observe those four different types of beauty is huge, you know, because it's getting your brain without, without the, any more prompt besides the idea of looking for beautiful design, morally beautiful. The, oh, the whole point of it is to catch your senses, to awaken, to look for that, right? Um, mm. Our vision sort of gets narrow and sometimes it has to, but like it's to get that openness part of us back up. Even if we're on lockdown, there's a part of us that still can be open. So, and if you want to check out the um, Metaphysical Milkshake podcast, I think that I'm trying to remember what the episode was about. It'll be in the show notes, but they really kind of talk about beauty in this way. And there's a great book and there's a lot of great work of philosophers and people talking about beauty and how, if we want a beautiful world, why don't we just start with beauty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In all, it's, in all its start. forms. It also, yeah. it also feels like a sort of scavenger hunt. And I've, I've kind of noticed the word scavenger hunt has been coming up a lot. Um, whether it's, you know, in certain trainings, you know, because everything's Zoom, right? Everything's online. Um, and the, the scavenger hunt, which I now realize kind of has that death theme in there, right? Because you're scavenging. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you're finding the beauty in what uh, can be scavenged. And yeah. so it's, it, the purpose is playful also. It's, it's inviting you to go out into your world um, in a in your safe sheltered in place way and finding that that beauty or in you it could be close to you it could be in the nature around you so um i i like that i'm, I'm gonna take that on i will be too <laughs> i'm not i'm not just um prescribing and not ta not taking my own dose it's, i've actually already been doing it and putting on the look at it and i'm yeah there are certain ones that i'm like well that one i gotta write it down you know I, sometimes i just email myself real quick to make sure I, I put that into the beauty journal. Ooh, so nice plan. Yeah. Just any way that I can sort of stick to whatever it's doing and I don't distract myself further from things. Mm, but, um, good one. Yeah. So we will, we will see what we do for our next episode. Um, we've got yeah. a few things changing up, which we'll talk about later. That's what do it. You think? Thank you so much, my beautiful Julian Javeau. Thank you, my beautiful Cindera Quackenbush of the frogs. It's a long story, sound people. Of, sound of the frog right. in the forest. And I send yes. my aloha to you. <laughs> I send my aloha to all of the listeners, wherever you are. You are yeah. never truly, truly alone. Um, and I, I hope that, you know, the silliness that you've just been witness to is in <laughs> some way shape or form helpful yay blessed be blessed be thanks for listening we know you could have done something else with the last oh i don't know 58 ish minutes of your life but we're glad that you spent it with us and as always you can find us on twitter facebook or instagram at tarot podcast and you can email us tarotpodcast at gmail.com we love hearing from you check out our show notes we've got links and um, lots of resources uh, for the, some of the things we talked about in the show and while you're there you can sign up and support us by becoming a patron patrons receive cool bonuses and our undying gratitude so a big thanks to our patrons cat Richard, Juniper, Peter, and Rash of Stay Woke Tarot. Your support makes all of this happen, and you make us smile every day. This show is produced by Boat and Media, and our theme music is by The Lunar Group. 
Until next time, aloha.